Do you know the way like YouTube photographers always talk about how you have to get your prints made? Get prints made, it's so good, it's so satisfying. You gotta see your work in print if you wanna see how your work looks. You can't just look at a screen, you gotta get it printed. Well, I can attest to the fact that they are 100% completely and utterly talking the truth. God damn, I'm an evangelist now. You gotta get your work printed. Ever since I got some prints made from my Japan 2022 trip like this print here of Miyajima at night on Hanamule Fine Art Baraita, or maybe this Mount Fuji shot also on Hanamule Fine Art Baraita. And once I got these images and inspected them for myself, I'm absolutely hooked on printing. And because of that, I also ended up buying a photo book from my Kenya trip, which just has all of my photos and seeing them in a photo book all put together is just awesome as well. This is an A3 photo book. It looks amazing. It was very expensive, but it looks amazing. And because of this book and these prints, I caught the printing bug. And thus, I bought my own printer. So I bought an Epson ET8550 EcoTank printer for photos. And can you hear that? It's the faint re of all the angry people that I just refer to this as a photo printer. When it's a simple six color dye ink, ooh, dye ink printer. So yes, this is a 13 inch A3 plus photo-ish printer that uses Epson's EcoTank system where the ink is uh, pretty cheap actually. And you refill these ink tanks from large ink bottles. And the reason I like this system is because I hate buying cartridges unless I have a damn good reason for it. And I am not spending excessive amounts of money on those damn cartridges. So this printer has six inks, a black, a photo black, gray, yellow, cyan, and magenta inks. And all of the inks apart from the photo black are actually dye inks, with the latter being a pigment ink, which is actually a really unusual setup. Generally, when it comes to printers, you have dye ink printers with all dye inks, or you've all pigment ink printers with. But this one uses kind of a combination of the two to help alleviate some of the issues with a dye ink printer. Now the reason I'm talking about ink so much for this is that for proper fine art prints or glissé prints, whatever the fuck that means, you're supposed to use pigment inks. And that is why all of the high-end photo printers with 8,000 cartridges like the Epson 800 or the Canon 1000 Pro Graph use. So apparently pigment inks can last a lot longer than dye inks, which can fade over time. But modern dye inks are apparently much longer lasting now. And this longer archivability is why pigment ink printers are often considered higher end prints. So then knowing the disadvantages of a dye ink printer, why did I buy one? Well, the reason is this isn't meant as a serious photo printer. It's a learning printer. So when you get into new topics like film photography or printing, you fall into worlds within worlds of knowledge without end, where mind and matter meet. And there is so much within these worlds to learn. You know, you end up falling down these massive rabbit holes trying to figure out all these terms and things you don't understand and reading stuff and watching videos and just trying to piece all this information together. You know, just in printing alone does the different paper types and weights, different finishes on the paper like satin, luster, matte, gloss, and how they will affect the final print and look of the image when it's framed or presented. Things like how to manage ICC profiles and paper types to get a decent print in the first place, how to prep a file for printing, resizing, sharpening, and understanding how I go from what I see on my screen into a print. And in order to learn all this, I need to be able to experiment. You know, I want to try different papers and settings and having fun with the printer and trying to understand what it's doing and trying to learn all of this on a high-end printer with really expensive ink would be honestly kind of silly and a bit of a waste of money. Also, there's a simple fact that this has to be my day-to-day -day printer for things like forms and shipping labels and just general day-to-day -day stuff. You know, it actually has a paper tray in here for this purpose, like printing the script to this video. So as a photo printer that can also double as a day-to-day -day printer, this one is actually really good. And if you're thinking about buying something like this, there is actually an A4 version of this printer as well, which is a lot cheaper. This is the A3 13 inch version, the 8550. But if I want to step up to a real photo printer, if you can even call it that, I would probably end up investing in a 17 inch printer, something like an Epson P900 or a Canon, you know, ProGraph 1000. 
17 inches is a much more common roll paper size to get and being able to print giant A2 photos would be really awesome. And with those larger printers, they take larger cartridges with more ink. So you end up where you spend less per print. But you also have to run the printer every so often to make sure it doesn't clog because the nozzle doesn't clog because pigment inks. It's a whole thing and a big goddamn mess. But for now, this printer is enough for me. Also incidentally, it has an A4 scanner underneath, which has actually come in handy more than once. And trust me, when you need to scan your passport for some reason, this is a lot better than trying to do it with a camera. Scanners still have their place. Admittedly, it's a rare place, but they still have a place. Now you might ask me, why don't I just use a lab for printing if I'm not doing that much? And I do intend to if I want to get really high-end prints made, like this one of Miyajima at night that I have done and still have to frame at some point. But even sending a print to a lab can be very difficult and potentially costly when you don't know how to prep a file properly for printing and you don't understand the printing process. Having this printer will allow me to do things like make small test prints at 100% and test different paper finishes before sending it off to a lab. Now will this be a perfect example of what the lab print will be? Obviously not but it does allow you to catch a lot of the problems earlier on in the process before you send it off to the lab for printing. Now recently I had to do a 20 by 30 inch canvas print of a drone shot and I used this printer to print out a few sections of it at 100% so that I could check that the print would turn out pretty decently and that the drone photo would hold up to being printed at that large size. And I was able to check all those things before I spent 185 euro getting it printed and shipped to me. Anyway, enough about justifying the printer. Let's take a look at some of the papers I've been playing with. And the paper I've been using is this one by Marit. I found that these papers to be quite good. The reason I picked them was because they were available on Amazon with Prime Shipping to Ireland. And they're reasonably priced and they seem to be reasonably high quality as well. But before I ended up ordering a few boxes of paper, I ordered their sample pack, which is a complete range of their A4 papers. And then I went a bit mad and printed out test images on every single page. Now printing out a sample image like this with lots of different colours, you know, lots of reds, blues, greens, yellows, dark colours, light colours, uh, blacks, very shadowy areas, very bright areas. Doing all of this uh, is very helpful across different papers because it lets you see the differences in the papers and how they'll render different types of scenes. Anyway, enough about the papers. Let's do a print and have a look at them. Okay, so we're going to resize this image. Image size, 420 on the long. Just when everything is filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. I might do smart sharpen. I think that's a speck of dust. I need to nuke that out of orbit. Yeah, I definitely need to go through and uh, clean up this file a little bit. Green leaves, A3. TIFF. Photoshop manages colors. Uh, we want to go for ET8550 Saturn GWAC ICC. That's the one that uh, Marit sent over. Let's see, rear paper feeder, A3 sized. So we're going to just move the image on the print layout, crop it out a little bit to keep uh, from cropping that side. Okay, let's give it a try. Print. Proceed. Okay. That seems to have turned out pretty decently. Let's uh, leave it up here to dry while we take a look at some other prints. So here we've got my uh, test print image that I've been using. It's mostly pictures from Africa and Japan. And I've printed it on Pro Satin, which I quite like. It's a sort of semi-gloss. It's a nice enough look. We've got things like uh, Pro Photo Gloss, which is very glossy and very, very vibrant. Um, but I think the glass is a bit much at times, but it does look quite nice. So this is their ultra glossy canvas. So it turns out you can just buy canvas that you can put through an inkjet printer. Uh, didn't know you could do that. I thought you needed special printing equipment and that's actually quite cool. Here is just standard fine art. This has a bit more of a coarse texture. It's not as smooth. 
something you probably use for larger prints, obviously a heavier weight than their single sided mat. So these are all the papers from the sample pack I bought from Marit to try them all out and see what I liked and get started printing. Obviously these aren't, you know, the full Hannah Mule photo rag paper. Um, I did actually buy a sample pack of them. Unfortunately, I printed things out arseways on them and the prints turned out terrible because I did not set up the printer correctly. I actually have some of the test prints from that. You can see like, like what even is this compared to the proper prints? Like, we're <laughs> like even just looking at these two, like what even is this? Like how, how did I F this up so badly? <laughs> This is Hannah Mule Fine Art Pearl and it looks like absolute trash because I had no idea what I was doing. All these prints are going in the bin. Here's some more bad prints. So we've got these horrendous prints. I even tried to put a coating on this one using the protective spray, it didn't work. So you might ask what the hell happened and it turns out if you leave on the automatic color management, Epson just uh, loses its goddamn mind and does things like this. You know, here we've got the uh, the line in the grass of Chernobyl because it's radioactively green. Yeah, this is one where I printed it our space and I selected the wrong paper type, but also has in the dark area a really bad gloss differential because it's bronzing out the ass because it's putting in too much ink because I picked the wrong paper. So let's take a look at some actual prints that are halfway decent or somewhat decent. So the first one here we have is a line this was the one shot and I actually had to use the Lightroom denoising because I had to shoot this at like 12,000 ISO I think on the Z8. This is on high gloss. This is a secretary bird on single sided mat. Looks nice. The prowling lioness on single sided mat. This one, I think I messed up the color management, but also I just think that the grass is very green because of the polarizer. So I might have to, uh, tone that down a little bit or you know shift the hue and that a little more to yellow so it looks a bit like this rather than this sort of ridiculously green color uh, here's the line again on matte here's this lioness on satin this is a macro shot obviously a flower I uh, shot this in the botanical gardens this is on ektar so it's an actual film photo this was shot on the d850 using the 200 to 500 here in the phoenix park it's a deer having a little bit of a chomp this is on the satin paper, which I quite like. I've been trying to get into black and white printing. Um, I'm not very good at it, as you can see. It's another can of worms, you know, worlds within worlds of knowledge. Uh, this is an infrared shot, so it's super high contrast at the Botanical Gardens on, I think, Roli 400. And something I actually noticed very quickly, particularly with this, is that the grain on a small print like this is not that noticeable. It kind of just melts away on the print. So if it looks very grainy on the screen, on the print it might not be. Here's the leaves image on matte single sided A4. We have the A3 version of that just printed and it's drying. Let's pull out some uh, A3 prints that I've done. This is the first image of the secretary bird on A3. And having an image printed out this big is just lovely. This is actually a dud print. There's little black marks here. I think they're ink droplets. Being able to see like little drops of water on its beak after it's been uh, hunting for frogs is super cool. You can see all the detail in the feathers. It looks super nice. And here we have a blown up version of the line and the rain. I absolutely love this shot. It's one of my favorites. Although the grass here is kind of very radioactively green. So I'll probably have to adjust that and just tone it down a little bit, you know, change the hue, put a bit of yellow into it. Make it look a bit more like the background and not as, you know, green as this, because it is a bit harsh at the moment. So here is the A3 leaves version, and I have to say, this looks really good. Um, the grain is virtually unnoticeable, and given that this was a 35 millimeter uh, ektar film negative that I scanned and printed, it actually looked really good. Like even compared to the A4 version, like the grain is a tiny bit more apparent, but honestly, it kind of just melts away onto the paper. I'm amazed at how much that happens. You know, you can see a little bit of graininess here in the shadow area in this blue spot. But even though I'm blowing up, you know, a very small negative to quite a large print, it still looks pretty damn good. I'm very happy with this. I have to say, you know, I was a little bit skeptical of all those people you see online saying you have to print your work, you know, seeing your work in print, it's the only way to see it properly. 
And I have to say, they were right all along. Having my work printed out like this is just so satisfying and so awesome. Even though this print probably to a proper printing person or a proper seasoned photographer will look at this and go, oh God, how did you screw up the print that badly? But to me, it just looks awesome. And I think it looks, you know, great. It's so satisfying. Get some prints made, people. It's worth it every time. And that's me creating some lovely prints with my new printer. But I do actually have a few other ideas on how I can use this printer in the future. So one thing you can actually do with this printer because it is an eco tank and doesn't use cartridges is that you can fill up those tanks with other inks. And there are some companies out there making some very interesting third party inks. There's a company out there called Farbenwork that makes a pigment ink set for this printer. Now I haven't tried them, but apparently it actually converts this into a full pigment ink set and it doesn't affect the colors on the print, although I really am pressing X to doubt on that one. But it is a very interesting idea and if I had my own, you know, ICC profiling system, I could probably get perfect prints using those pigment inks and I'd have a, my own pigment ink printer, which would be cool. Another set of inks they sell is actually a carbon black ink set. So you essentially replace all of the inks in this with different shades of gray. And that allows you to make carbon black prints with this, which are essentially just black and white prints, but they're using carbon pigment and they basically last forever. And that's really kind of cool. I don't know a huge amount about carbon black printing on a inkjet printer. I know there's like carbon printing using like uh, something called a tissue and like layering gelatin together in hot water back in the film days. But I don't really know what the deal with uh, carbon printing on inkjet printers is. There is one other use that I want to do with this though, which is even more interesting. And that is the creation of digital negatives. So you can actually buy special clear film that will go through one of these printers and allows you to create a digital negative for contact printing. So essentially what you do is in Photoshop, you invert your image and you control for contrast and adjust everything. And then you print out a digital negative on clear film. Then with that digital negative, you can actually do contact prints using traditional photographic processes. So you could take standard silver gelatin paper, put your digital negative on top, and that allows you to create perfect contact prints on silver gelatin paper which is super cool. But then things get really interesting when you start diving off that train. For example, you could in theory create Aura 4 digital negatives, although that would be a little bit weird because you would essentially be reintroducing the orange mask back into the digital negative. I'm not entirely sure how that would work, but you could do color digital negative prints and do it with Aura 4 processing. And if, for example, I had a Jobo machine, and some print drums, I could do RA4 digital negative contact prints using my inkjet printer and my computer and a scanner, rather than just enlarging in a cut enlarger and doing it that way. But that's kind of the basics of you know, digital negative contact printing. The really interesting stuff happens when you dive into alternate processes. So you can actually use these contact negatives to create things like cyanotype prints, which will be super cool, but the really interesting one for me and kind of my ultimate goal for this process would be to create my own platinum palladium prints, which would be incredibly awesome as they are apparently like the best black and white prints that you can kind of make. Now, because they're made of platinum and palladium, they are hella expensive to make, but they're absolutely worth looking into. If you've never seen one before, they are absolutely beautiful and the idea of being able to create those prints myself using this and my own photos would be awesome but that is a long way down the line you know I need to master actually getting like normal prints out of this before I start you know adding extra steps like printing digital negatives and exposing in your UV and doing all that kind of crazy stuff but that is sort of a, a long term you know goal in the distance that I do want to move towards for my printing maybe in you know 2000 and never but anyway, I hope you enjoyed me gushing over my printer for the last however long this video is, and I'll see you next time. And in case you're wondering, yes, I am aware of the gigantic volcano that's growing on my forehead. I don't know what the deal is with it. It just appeared a few days ago, and yes, it is annoying me as well. Get a good look at it there, Sonny. 
I'm not drinking a highball to cool down under these video lights. You're drinking a highball to cool down under these video lights. God damn, that's good. F you, Japan, for introducing me to this drink.